Greetings, YouTube. I recently saw a video where someone was talking about some influencer type person, and she had done a video about leaving the left, which got me thinking. If someone leaves a socially conservative worldview behind them, and they cease being socially conservative, they walk away from the Republican Party or whatever social conservative political or religious group that they are currently a member of, it means that they've taken a step forward. They've progressed. They have come to understand that the world doesn't revolve around them, that the world is multifaceted. It is intersectional. They have learned the basic concepts of sympathy, empathy, and you know, compassion that everyone has humanity and is willing and, and, and it should be, you know, fully granted civil liberties and human rights. It is a great day that should be fully separate. It's a fully uh, um, celebrated. And uh, I've seen it happen. It's not common, I know, but it does happen. And we should, again, celebrate it when that, when that happens. However, when someone leaves the left, that's a different matter. First of all, in America, we don't really have a functioning left. Um, the Democratic Party in America is pretty much a center-right entity. It is not progressive in the least. There are certain members of Congress, of course, which are progressive, like Bernie Sanders and the squad, um, but they are few and far between. Uh, for the most part, uh, the Democrats are center-right, and they are very much willing to support the status quo. Um, so when someone says they're leaving the left, what they're really talking about is that up until now, they have been willing to pretend they are liberal. They are and have always been conservative, whether of the economic or the political or the social variety. Um, it's just that on top, up until now, until they got pushback against something in 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 the United States, they could hide behind the veil of liberalism. They would tut tut racism and sexism and misogyny and uh, transphobia and homophobia and xenophobia. And they would say, oh, aren't those terrible things? And they would never, you know, overtly engage in any of them. But they would be very happy to just sit back and allow them to continue to exist. They would be very willing to do the whole NIMBY thing, not in my backyard. Or they would do the thing. Oh, it's not you know, it's not really the best time to be moving those particular, you know, rights forward. You know, it, it's, it's it isn't convenient to us. You know, because they didn't want to have their particular position of privilege assailed by some kind of progressive movement. And then they got some pushback. And when they got the pushback, suddenly they have decided that they're no longer liberal. When in actuality, they've never been liberal. They just didn't want to admit publicly that they're conservative. They didn't want to ally themselves with the group, the party, which is nothing but terrorists. They're fascists. The Republican Party are fascist terrorists. It's, it's that simple. They have embraced fascism and, ter and terrorism and total totalitarianism completely. They, they are morally and ethically bankrupt and a danger both to America and the world at large. Um, but the folks that, you know, have decided that they have to leave the left, it's just now that their position of privilege is being threatened because they're being called on their sexism or their racism or their homophobia or their transphobia. And they don't like it. They don't like being called on it. They don't want to have to face the reality that they have never really embraced diversity, that they have never embraced intersectionality, that they've never had to wanted to deal with or face their own prejudices. Um, it's, it's not easy. It's, it's hard. It is ugly. Do you think I wanted to face the fact that I have done sexist and racist and homophobic and transphobic and xenophobic things in my life? No, I did not want to face those things, but it did. And I learned from it. And now I strive to be an ally. And the first step is admitting it. The second step is not doing it again. And if I screw up and someone from one of the groups that I've 
offended or oppressed or or stepped on the toes of wants to point that out to me fair fair play it's on me all i need to do is thank them for the lesson and then learn from it and not do it again that's being anti-racist. That's being anti-sexist. That's being, as the Republicans love to say, woke. Which, of course, for the most part, nowadays, just means black. Um, urban has become a tired term, so now they can use woke. So whenever they talk about anti-woke policies, they're actually discussing anti-black policies. Because um, that's another dog whistle they can use now. And uh, it makes their uh, their base feel all happy and, and, and righteous. But the folks that have said that, you know, I'm no longer, you know, a liberal, I'm no longer on the left, they never were. They were never a progressive. They just hid behind that veil of respectability because they liked the status quo. And now people are saying the status quo has to change. And they don't want the status quo to change. They would rather embrace fascism than see their position of privilege undermined. And that's disgusting. So when anybody who says that they are leaving the left, they're just saying, I'm taking off the mask and I'm showing you that I have always been willing to embrace fascism to protect my position in society.